fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi yo silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> When the great wave of emigration swept into the West after the Civil War, many of the wagon trains were attacked and destroyed by hostile Indians, and many more might never have reached their destination if it had not been for the masked rider of the plains. Astride his great horse Silver, he acted as guide and guardian for the pioneers and blazed the trail toward the new frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear when adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! The Apaches are in the hill country! We've got to hurry! Hi, oh, Silver! How are you? Two wagons, flanked by a small body of horsemen, were laboriously making their way over the rough trail to Fort Stevens. On either side of the trail stretched the wild, broken, boulder-strewn wilderness that made up the Pipestone Hills. The air was still, the sun warm, the silence undisturbed except for the wagons and their escort. But suddenly, without warning, there arose high, savage yells, the thunder of hoofs and the sharp vibration of gunfire. And in the space of seconds, the hills were alive with painted men wearing feathered headbands. It's Apache! Go for your guns! Fight them off! Save the children! Save the children! Give us some the Redskins, boys! Let them have it! Pour lead to them! Boss, I've got one of the wagons. They're two to our one. What'll we do? There's only one thing to do. Fight for your lives! Come on, boys! The attackers, however, not to be beaten off, swarmed into the two wagons and redoubled the intensity of their fire. The whites on horseback held firm for a while, but finally wavered, fell back, then obeyed the command of their leader. Right for it, boys! Clear out! The wagon's gone and we can't do nothing but try and save our own hides. Come on, fellas, let's go! Get up there! Come on! Get up there! It was a week later that a masked figure mounted upon a splendid white stallion guided his horse across the open plains toward the distant town of Lake Falls. Beside him rode an Indian, holding himself erect in the saddle of his powerful paint horse. There they are, Tonto. See? They're just topping that rise ahead of us. Ah. We'll catch up to them in plenty of time. Mm, what we do? We've got to see that they don't meet the fate of that party that tried to get through the hills to Fort Stevens last week. Oh. After what you've told me, I'm afraid the danger is worse than I had thought. And there are plenty danger. Everyone knows Geronimo's braves are trying to keep whites out of the hills. And that's bad enough in itself. But if outlaws are using the Apaches to cover their own raids, then the danger is doubled. Not right. Are you sure Apaches didn't attack those wagons a week ago? Uh-huh. Hunter talked to Injun. Him say Apache not do it. I'm not surprised. Uh-huh. It fits in with some information I learned. Mm, what that? You remember Baldy Gorman? Uh huh. Well, he's gotten together some men and has made his headquarters in Lake Falls. The troops stationed there can't spare the men or time to escort all the parties that wish to cross the hills. 
The Bald and his men have been hiring out as guards to anyone with a price to pay them. Mm, me not know that. It was a good idea. An organization like that could do a lot of good. No one could object to paying men who risked their lives to offer protection. Huh. I wouldn't have questioned it. If I hadn't known something of Baldy's past before he came to this section. Him, he bad fella. The people up north seem to think so. When the law couldn't touch him, they took matters in their own hands and ran him out. Ah. It was Baldy's group that escorted the wagons that were destroyed last week. Not heap strange. I don't know. The fact remains that one of the settlers survived and reported that Baldy put up quite a fight until he was forced to ride off. The survivor seemed convinced that none of his men were to be blamed for the tragedy. Oh. I'd like to give Baldy the benefit of the doubt, but I don't know. What do you think? There are two suspicious facts. For one, several parties escorted by his band have been attacked. Twice the attacks resulted in what were practically massacres. And yet, as far as I can learn, Baldy has yet to lose a man. Oh. Of course, many of the parties his men have escorted have reached Fort Stevens safely. I've learned that few of them possess much money, however. Those that were attacked did... Why, other fellow not ask question. Why should they suspect him? I wouldn't have myself if I hadn't heard of him in the north. Uh. These people ahead of us, I happen to know, are comparatively wealthy. They're Lige Cook, his married sister, and his brother-in-law, Matt Lowell. They intend to settle beyond Fort Stevens, buy Mexican cattle, and start ranching. There, wagon. Now that we're getting close. You remember our old camp this side of town, just below Copper Ridge? Uh-huh. You'd better ride ahead and circle these people and wait for me there. But the feeling against Indians, what it is, they might suspect my purpose if we were seen together. Me, ride to camp and wait. Good. I won't be long. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. Silver old fellow, I can't tell these people what I suspect about Baldy because I have no proof. But I think I can persuade them not to hire him. Come on, old boy. Come on, Silver. Come on, fellow. Hold on there. Come on, Silver. Hello, ahead. It's a masked man. Whoa, oh, who's up? Whoa, whoa, back there, whoa. Whoa, whoa, Silver. Oh, boy. Don't reach for them holsters, mister. I'm not an outlaw. Then what's a mask for? I wear it for reasons of my own. Uh, but you must I'm be. I'm here enough. to give you some advice and some news I think will help you. News about the engines? Not exactly. I don't like this. I think you'd better get on your way, stranger. I don't reckon we need no mask hombre's advice. You're still convinced I'm an outlaw? You didn't think we'd just take your say-so about it, did you? And I'll prove I'm not. I'll prove... Watch. Uh, Judah, oh, uh, don't shoot, stranger. Don't shoot. I have you covered. You're carrying several thousand dollars with you. No. Listen to Wait, me. Wait, please. If I were an outlaw, I'd take that money. But I'm not going to. You can see for yourself. I'll holster my guns again. There. Lines, you can cover me with that shotgun next to you if you wish. Yeah. He ain't taking the cash? I've told you I'm not. Matt, a crook would have helped himself to everything we got. I reckon that's so, all right. Mister, that was a right convincing argument you put up. As far as I'm concerned, you ain't a crook. What's the idea of the mask, then? We'll not discuss that. Mm, we didn't mean to be over-curious. Now, you said you had some news for us. Some news and some advice. What news? Tomorrow, a detachment of soldiers is taking a wagon load of ammunition through the hills to Fort Stevens. Yeah? How does that concern us? You can make Lake Falls before nightfall. I'm sure if you look up Major Hyde when you get there, he'll give you permission to accompany the soldiers. That should mean your safe passage to oh, the fort. that'd be fine. It'd be fine if we needed the soldiers, but I've made different arrangements. Yes? Uh-huh. Of course, I didn't have no way of knowing there'd be soldiers making the trip, so I sort of fixed it up with that fellow Baldy Gorman to take us an escort. Has anything been definitely settled? Have you paid him yet? Well, no, not exactly. We just sort of agreed between us, that's all. In that case, I'd advise you to go with the soldiers instead. What's the difference? It would save you money, for one thing. Well, Baldy wasn't going to charge us much. The most important reason is that the Apaches seldom attack soldiers. They prefer to attack civilians. Yeah, but after what I promised Baldy, you I... You have your wife to consider, Matt, and you owe Baldy nothing. I don't know, but what the masked man's got the right of it, Matt. You think so, Lige? Well, I think it's just plain sense, come to look at it. That trail to the fort through the hills is plum dangerous. We'd be sort of foolish not to go along with soldiers if we got the chance. I think it'd be wisest, honey. Ah. You figure the Major would be agreeable, mister? Of course. He'd be glad to furnish escorts for everyone traveling that route if he had the men. In this case, he's sending troopers anyhow. And I reckon that's what we better do. I'm glad you made that decision. We may meet again. Uh, but Come on, Silver. Wait. No use trying to hold back that fellow, I guess. Well, let's be getting into town. Get up there, you critters. Get along with you. Get along there. Oh. 
Arriving in Lake Falls late in the afternoon, Matt followed the Lone Ranger's advice. Leaving his wife and brother-in-law to watch the wagon, he sought out Major Hyde. He found the officer in conversation with a group of men in front of the post office and led him to one side where he stated his request. Of course, Major, if it ain't convenient, why, we can make other arrangements. Nothing of the kind. Then it's all right with you? I'm returning to the barracks in just a few minutes. Lieutenant Doan will be in command of the detail for the fort. I'll explain the circumstances to him and give orders that you're to be picked up when he's prepared to leave. By golly, that'll be swell. The details start quite early. Any time will be all right with us. Yeah, very well. You understand, of course, that during the escort, you will be expected to follow Lieutenant Doan's orders. Oh, sure. That's for your own protection. I doubt that there'll be trouble, but if there is, the lieutenant must have the authority to deal with it in his own way. Shucks, that'll suit us just fine. You can tell the lieutenant he won't have no trouble with us. Uh, say, Major, just how bad are them Apaches acting up now? As bad as they say? They're a pesky nuisance. Done plenty of killing, huh? Yes, and they'll continue to do so. As long as Geronimo's at large. Well, you boys will get him one of these days. Yeah, we're trying. And by the way, where's your wagon? Well, just outside town, right beside the trail as you head for the hills. There ain't no decent place in town to stay overnight, so we're making camp there. Then the detail will meet you there. You can expect them shortly after dawn. We'll be ready. Well, you'll excuse me. I'll be returning to the barracks. Good luck. You bet. And thanks a heap. That's quite all right. You, Mr. Lowell. Huh? Oh, howdy. Yeah, that's my handle. Lowell. Matt Lowell. Uh-huh. I thought you was. The boss seen you over here and asked me to ask you if you wanted to step over to his office now and fix everything up for your escort. Huh? Escort? Oh, you're one of Baldy Gorman's men. Is that it? That's right. You coming? Gosh, I'm sorry, but well, if I... you're busy now, the boss will be around all evening. Uh, that ain't just what I meant. What do you mean? Well, the fact is, you see, I, uh, I kind of got things fixed up with the soldiers. You mean you ain't planning to hire us? I, uh, well, there was no set agreement. Backing down on a bargain, ain't you? I said there was nothing set for sure. Well, he seemed to figure there was. I don't know about this. I kind of hate to go back and tell him maybe he won't take it so good. Gosh, I'm downright sorry if I put him out, any. you ain't changing your mind any, huh? No, not as long as the soldiers are willing. Well, it's your tough luck, I guess, mister. Ain't nothing for me to worry about. Afternoon. Hey, what was that you said? I just said it was your tough luck. Tough luck? That's what I said. When Baldy makes a bargain, he expects to stick to it. Anybody backing out on him is likely to find he's got ways of making him sorry. Hey, look here, you... Don't say I didn't tell you. Gus, a member of Baldy Gorman's band who had spoken to Matt Lowell, hastened back to the office of his employer to report Matt's change of plan and... Boss! Fool idiot backed out. Yeah? Made plans to travel with the soldiers tomorrow, at least ways he says he has. But you just give me the word and I'll go back and change his mind for him. You will not. But you said he was carrying at least $10,000. You want us to lose out on all that cash? Just what was you figuring to do? Well, a gun whipping wouldn't hurt none. And what had happened to us when the soldiers found out about it? And you got the sense to see that the only way we can get by is to keep folks from suspicioning us? But blast that old boy. Shut up. I only you want to You only go... started out to tell me what to do. Well, don't do it. I'm the boss here. I'll do the thinking, give the orders, and take care of what talking has to be done. The less the rest of you have to say, the better off we'll be. Trigger. Yeah, boss? You're going to get in touch tonight with the rest of the boys. Tell them to get their engine fixings ready to you just like we planned. Sure. You still plan on having them attacked just as if we was along? Sounded that way, didn't it? But you can't. The soldiers will be there. The boys can't get away with no raids on troopers. There won't be more than a dozen. Yeah, but even And the so soldiers I... ain't going to get far trying to keep us from the cash if they ain't got bullets to fire at us, are they? If they ain't got bullets? Gosh, Baldy, they're taking a whole wagon load along. <laughs> sure. And right now that wagon is all loaded and ready to go down to the barn. You got some kind of a scheme? Ever see me when I didn't? What is it? Shucks, when I heard Matt Lowell and Lige was getting here today, I figured right off that they'd be likely to go with the soldiers instead of hiring us. Yeah? <laughs> so I thought up a plan. You mind telling us, boss? Sure, why not? You recollect that soldier owes me all that cash? Yeah, come what his name is? Uh-huh. Well, he's on guard duty tonight, down where that wagon load of ammunition is. Meaning? Meaning that Crummett will do as I say. And meaning that when them soldier boys find themselves in a tough spot with a certain bunch of Apaches up in the hills, maybe they won't have quite so much ammunition for fighting as they figured on. <laughs> nope. 
And I got a notion them soldiers is headed for a great big surprise. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. continue our story. It was late afternoon when Baldy outlined his plans to Gus, and that evening the Lone Ranger and Tonto were in their camp below Copper Ridge, just a few miles from town. Tonto, I wonder if Matt and his wife and Lige Cook are safe. Mm, them all right. Them right with soldier. But not until tomorrow. Not right. In the meantime, if our suspicions of Baldy are correct, he may act. And what do you think? Those people are carrying a lot of money with them. Too much for travel in this kind of country. Mm, not right. They camped outside town, too. It wouldn't be difficult to steal that cash. You think Baldy do it? Frankly, I don't. He's got a good thing here. He'd be foolish to risk anything near town. If he's as clever as he's supposed to be, nothing will ever be stolen by his gang except where Apaches can be blamed. Uh. On the other hand, the cash Lowell and Cook are carrying would be quite a temptation. Especially if Baldy should have reason to think that his game couldn't continue much longer. He might take the risk for a quick clean-up and escape. You got plan? I think we should keep our eye on both parties. Oh. I could watch over Matt's camp until I was sure his group was safely with the soldiers. And what Tonto do? You could enter town and keep track of Baldy. Oh, Tonto do that. And I think we'd better not waste time. Here, Silver. Here, Scout. If anything is planned for tonight, one of us should get wind of it. All right. Steady, Silver. Yep. And if that happens, he should get in touch with the other at once. Uh, yeah. But if nothing happens, Kimosabe, return here when the soldiers start for Fort Stevens. I'll do the same. Uh, Let's go. Get him up, Scout. Hail Silver! Away! It was later that same evening that a small group of horsemen slowly approached an immense barn outside Lake Falls that had once been used as a terminal for freight wagons, but was now employed by the Army. At a low word of command from their leader, they halted their mounts. Pull up, fellas. No use taking chances. Oh, 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 oh. Stay to the left. We can keep in the shadows, boss. Yeah. Ready, fellas? Ready, Ready. Then come along. If anybody but Crummett's on duty, we're just walking by, Savvy. But if it's him like it ought to be, we're all right. Lead the way. Boys, you think we ought to do Blast this? it, keep still. Oh, you're all the time yelling at me. And for good reason. Now, all of you, don't open your mouths to say a doggone word. All right. right. Hold up, fellas. That you, Kermit? Only? Yeah. How many fellas you got with you? Just the four of us you see here. Everything clear? Anybody around? Well, I guess not. Gosh, Baldy, I don't like this none. <laughs> what you like don't matter. You're going to get me in a heap of trouble. We'll clear you some way. But I'm... But if you turn yellow now, we'll show you what real trouble is like. Get that? I can be court-martialed for this. Uh-huh. You can be shot in the back some night when he ain't expecting it to. Which ain't no better than the other, I reckon. Besides, you recollect what I promised you. I'm canceling every doubt you owe me from cards. Well, come on, then. The door to the barn unlocked, soldier? I got the key right here. Here we are. Now hurry up and let us in. Just a second. The wagon you want is that one right straight ahead of you. See it? Can we light a lamp? Don't be such an idiot. You think we want to be found out? It's going to make it awful hard working in here without you a light. You ain't got the sense of a chipmunk. I don't know what I put up with you for. We'll just open up the boxes here. Right? You said there was a place inside here where we could hide the ammunition, didn't you, Crummett? Yeah. There's an old storeroom over in that corner. Nobody ever goes in. I'll show you the way. Good enough. There's gravel and sand and such just outside the door that we can use for filling the boxes again when they're empty. Trigger. Uh-huh. Climb into that wagon and start handing them boxes down. All right, boys. What was that? I'll boss, be. Somebody fell down from overhead. I seen him. Was one of them boards stretched between the rafters and it broke with his weight? Where is he? Get him. There he is. Don't make too much noise. You want to wake the whole barracks up? I got it. Somebody give me a hand to hold it. That's you, Gus? Give me a hand to that. He's slipping loose. You let me go. I got a hold of him. Hang on, fellas. Get those now. Crummit, light just one match. We got to see who this hombre is. Uh, Just wait. Uh, Here's a match. Take a doggone quick look. A redskin. You let me go. Quit trying to break loose. Crummit, another match. Hurry it up. Uh, You've seen him. I want one more look. If he's the fella I think he is. 
Blast it coming like that, match. There. Recognize him, boss? Just what I thought. Engine, what's your handle? Me not say. Then don't. I know your name without your telling. By thunder, you're Tonto. Me not talk. Tonto? Who's this? Plain Pison. Gonna finish him off so he can't tell what if he's seen. If you do, I'll finish you off. You ain't gonna let him go. Don't any of you fellas know what the name Tonto means? Seems like I've heard it somewhere before, but I can't recollect right off. A Lone Ranger's engine sidekick. No. Oh, but that means... That, that means that we finished him off, that masked hombre would be on our trail till he got all of us. Gosh. What are we gonna do? We just can't let him go. Trigger, you're gonna take this engine into the hills. We'll tie him up so you won't have no trouble handling him. Take him where? To the hideout to the rest of the gang users. What do you suppose? And then what? And then you're going to hold him there. After this job is over, we'll use him for bait to trap that masked man. If we can do that, we'll get rid of both of them. What if the Lone Ranger ain't trapped? And all I can say is we better scatter. And the farther we get, the safer we'll be. Because if the Lone Ranger ever catches on to what we've been doing, he'll be after us. And you can bet your bottom dollar he won't stop till he's rounded us up. Every last one. Matt, his wife, and Lige were up at dawn the following morning, prepared to start on the journey through the hills with the soldiers. They breakfasted, arranged all their belongings, and settled down to wait. But it was only a moment later that Lige pointed down the trail. There's the soldiers, Matt. They coming? Oh, by golly, there they are. Lige, hand me them reins. We ain't gonna hold them up for a second. Here you are. My sakes, I'm glad it's the soldiers that's gonna see us through them hills. Matt, this is real luck. You bet it is, honey. Hi there. You, Lieutenant Doan? Who? Who? Hello? That's me. Follow me ahead of that army wagon. Hold the pace, we said. Right. Get up, boy. Lige, Ruth, we're on our way to blazes with Geronimo. And here's hoping we'll soon be stocking our finest range in the whole west. Get up there. Get along, you fellas. Get along. The cavalcade, consisting of two wagons and an escort of a dozen troopers, began the ascent to the lesser foothills into the Pipestone Hills themselves. The pioneers and the soldiers made good time their first day, and when they camped that night, they were near the spot where the wagon train had been ambushed a week before. Well, here we are, honey. A good part of the way already. Matt, it, it was just a few miles ahead that them other folks was killed, wasn't it? You ain't worrying, are you? No. I... <laughs> honey, if you are, you needn't. We got good horses, good fighting men, and a whole wagon full of ammunition. <laughs> the best thing them Apaches can do is just lay low. In the morning at dawn, the journey was resumed. It was noon when they passed the scene of the former attack. Two half-burned wagons revealed the site, and every man in the party as he rode by kept a nervous watch upon the surrounding hills. No sign of hostile savages was noted, however, and the wagons and escort continued on. The sun dropped toward the horizon, and the trail became a place of strange shadows. How are you feeling, honey? Think you can cook up something pretty soon for a couple of hungry men? I... I guess. Huh? What's ailing you? I... I don't know. Not feeling good? I don't know how to say it. You just think I'm a coward. Nothing of the kind, Ruth. If you've got something on your mind, get it off. Sure, honey, go ahead. Uh, I just feel that, that we won't never reach camp. Oh, nerves. Just nerves, that's all it is. Them and these doggone shadows of rocks thrown down. I don't know. Oh, Matt, I just can't shake the feeling that... Why, it's nothing to be worried about. Oh! Get ready, men. Take aim. Fire! Matt, grab your rifle. This is a real thing, and we're taking a hand. After the first sudden burst of firing, however, the attackers retreated behind the many boulders that lined the trail. The soldiers, realizing that their one chance of salvation was to dislodge the enemy, made no effort to conserve their ammunition. Fire at will! Drive the redskins back! You hear my order? Keep on firing, men! Sir, the men are running out of ammunition! Then get some of the wagon. Hurry, man! Lord, you there, cook! Give this fellow a hand. Break out ammunition. See this distributed. Jump up in the wagon, lads. I'll pass you out, boss. Got one? Grab a hold, hold on you. On the ground with it. 
Break it open, mister. Lieutenant's in a hurry. Well, I'll be. Hey there, pass out another box. This one ain't got nothing in it but travel and sand. Here it comes. There you are. Try this one. Sand again. How in blazes... Where is that ammunition? Here you, man. This has got to be done quickly. Thank your pardon, sir, but just take a look. Good Lord. I don't think I'm like that. Something with sand and rust. Impossible. But just the same as so. But this means we're at the mercy of those Apaches. What will we do, sir? Don't stop shooting. Keep on. Uh, Keep shooting. Put out a bullet. Not a flame on left. Yeah, and them Redskins savvy what's wrong with us. Look, they're getting ready to rush. Get over here, honey. The Redskins are coming and we can't fight them off. Oh, no, man. No. Here they come. Love your guns. Fight them hand to hand. We haven't got oh, a chance. Listen. There's more soldiers. You hear that? It's reinforced. Even the engine. And look, look, them soldiers are being led by that same masked fellow we met riding that white horse. Look at him ride. Come on, children, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sir, how did you know we were in trouble? What brought you here? You'll have to ask the masked man to explain that, Lieutenant. Baldy Gorman captured Tonto and took him prisoner. Tonto's horse led me to the place where he'd been caught. Then it was simply a matter of trailing Tonto until I found him. He told me then about the ammunition being stolen, and it was clear what was being planned. You sure saved our lives, stranger. And the way you helped round up them engines was something worth seeing. Only they aren't Indians. Huh? How about that over there? Isn't that a die on your prisoners? Ranger, you was right. They ain't Apaches at all. They was just made up to look like redskins. Then, Major, this completes the roundup. We got Baldy and the others before we left. This is the rest of the gang. Renegade whites. Stranger, when the firing squad gets through with its work, there'll be one band of outlaws that will have ridden upon his last raid. Hi-oh! The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Mm-hmm.